grew up as a Jehovah's Witness and so that um, even still I guess today <clears throat> any kind of religion is um, is still there's not a lot of understanding um, around it so I was being bullied for that um, I had turned to food for comfort with everything that the loss in my family and the illnesses and stuff like that so I had put on a lot of weight so I became quite a chubby kid and um, I was probably a re rebellious enough that my mum at 16 was like, I can see this isn't really working out for you. Um, do you want to choose to be one or not? And I was like, I choose not because <laughs> I was like running away. I was doing all sorts of things. Um, so I haven't been since I was 16, but um, it had quite an impact on my life because it was uh, from such a young age. It took me many years to unwind all that stuff in my brain. It was um, unfortunately kind of like um, a brainwashing and, and I had a lot of guilt and a lot of fear. Yeah, I think I, I definitely confused that um, to be accepted, I had to be like them instead of being myself and who I am and owning my feminine power and blending the both, which is what gratefully I, I do now. Um, but yeah, it went internal and um, I honestly didn't know I had an eating disorder or a problem or even a drug addiction. I didn't even really know. I um, really just thought I had no willpower. I was, just, I was just, I was, I've always been very hard on myself and uh, my dad's very hard on himself and he was very hard on us. So, you know, in, you know, uh, not good enough had to be better. So I guess you start to take on a little bit of your environment and then you just sort of hear things um, in general in passing, particularly like about women that, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. So I'm like, oh my God, I have to I have to be thinner, I have to be stronger, I have to be prettier. No, I can't be prettier. Like, it's just like this big confusing game. So I was extremely hard on myself and I really honestly just thought I had no willpower. And for those that don't know, that's just sort of an underlying issue for a lot of um, mental illness and things like that. But it has to be, it's like your environment. You have to have the precursors for it, all these things. And then once you check the box in chemically, it's checked on. So my dad is positive for it and my brothers are black. Ha like have it but it's not turned on so mine obviously my childhood stress was enough to flick the switch and I found the letters and I was like this poor girl's lying to herself wow. like I read the letters like 10 years ago about who, what I learned what I was going to do what I got out of it and um, it would have been I would say it was at least um, 10 years uh, after and not to put anyone off but to completely feel uh, comfortable that um, even if it's still in there, I am okay with it. Like it doesn't trigger me anymore. And, and that's the hardest part. Sometimes it just, it doesn't go away. You get better at, at choosing to live healthy instead of that. Like that doesn't um, fuel you anymore. Um, when yoga came into my life and it really challenged me because at the time, um, and the same sort of thing with eating disorders, you're in your head a lot, which a lot of people are these days, they're stressed out. So the fear that comes when you slow down because you've got to actually hear yourself and listen to yourself and then the thoughts feel like they're getting more and that's sort of the point of meditation is to, and yoga is to try and like, you know, slowly start to calm those things down so you can have more breathing space. Um, initially, because I was so young and just sort of coming out of recovery, that was too much. And it was like, oh, I need to move faster. I need to run. I need to lift weights. I need to like go crazy. Yeah, I'd always um, used reusables and more from a health point of view. So um, I learned quite uh, young about how um, plastics can leach and affect the endocrine system. And I had a friend that had a massive fibroid removed that was like the size of maybe a tennis ball or something in her stomach and they reported that it was from um, drinking all out of all her plastic water bottles and that really wow. freaked me out and I was wow. super young when I heard about that because some people don't see it and it's not literally in their backyard. The rubbish man's picking up saying he's recycling yeah. it and dumping it and they're sending it offshore and they're dumping it somewhere else that, you know, out of, out of sight, out of mind. But, you know, people need to become more aware of not just how it affects the environment, it is affecting your immediate health. If it sits, like they go, oh, but I just grabbed the bottle from the fridge. It's cold. It hasn't been in the sun. That bottle left Asia or Fiji. It sat on a dock. It sat on a ship. It sat on another dock. It sat on another truck. No one had done it. And I was just mm. like, holy moly. Okay. So um, I came up with the name, the, tri uh, the tagline, pretty much like designed it there on the spot. And... Mm. Um, 
was like, okay, so need to find factories and do patents. And I was like, sometimes I feel like you're guided a little bit. And I was like, okay. And then we started searching on uh, Alibaba, went to Asia, um, found factory, went to um, LA, found a lawyer, uh, filed patents. And nine months later, we did a test launch with um, our first prototype. Which, but we're going to start soon sort of mobot moments or mobot stories. I hear so many stories. It's such a conversation starter. And, and that's realistically, that's cool. like for me, um, when I started this, I, I love building communities. I love being around the community and seeing people being able to like free themselves, not only of an injury or a trauma, but being able to connect with others in a like-minded way. Because technically under the surface, we're all suffering in some way we've got our own thing that we're going through and if we can just connect in a way that you know shows a side of ourselves that doesn't have to wear a mask and for me I was I must be dehydrated and hormonal um I'll go home and go to bed and I knew enough about them but not for it to happen to me it hadn't happened to me like that before so Mm. I went home and I went to bed and um super lucky woke up next day Mm -hmm. we build up these barriers and these walls and to try and protect ourselves and I took it as that going okay well what is it going to take for me to to really drop those down and um interestingly enough a lot of it had to do with uh putting myself out there in the public more um so like doing more comedy doing more stand-up because a they were some of my biggest fears and I don't like to have big fears hold me back because I I just I just don't like that space in my brain where I'm walking around with something that I'm afraid to do. I would love to.